This is the first of two videos on the Colombian exchange. When European culture met Indian culture, the Europeans brought not only their technology, their religion, their clothes, and other manifestations of culture, but they also brought the European environment, their European crops and animals and diseases. And when they arrived, of course, they, they found new crops and animals and diseases. Uh, and this exchange has become known as the Columbian Exchange, a term first used by the historian Alfred Crosby in 1972. This exchange, of course, went on for decades, transferring both, transforming both worlds and, and both cultures. When Crosby first discussed the Columbian Exchange, yeah, you know, the emphasis was more on ecological imperialism, the idea that it was more Europe to America, a one-way exchange. Now a story and stress greater the two-way transfer. In this topic, we won't discuss all the aspects of culture, technology like guns or the wheel and so forth, but rather focus on the environmental exchange, which is considered the key part of the Columbian Exchange. In this first of the two videos, we'll look at the way uh, Europe well, European crops and so forth that came to America, the way Europe transformed America. The first Europeans to quote unquote discover the Americas were the Spanish in the late 1400s. And when the Spanish began to settle Central and South America, they found gold and they needed workers to mine the gold. And what they ended up doing was conscripting as, as slaves the uh, Native Americans. And so the Native Americans were in close contact with the Spanish, and that meant that the Spanish diseases caused pandemics among the Indians who developed little resistance, who had, you know, over the over millennium developed little resistance to the diseases. Europeans had, had uh, evolved resistance, and they had the disease in, in them. And when they came to the uh, Americas, of course, the Indians were, were wiped out. And so the Spanish, as I say, incorporated the Native Americans into their society, albeit as slaves. The accompanying sex between the races led to a sort of a mixed breed of people, half Native American and half Spanish, known as Mesitas. In time, the Spanish controlled lands in Central and South America uh, became very hierarchically based on race. Uh, at the top were the pure blood Hispanics, and then the Mazitas, and finally on the bottom, the pure blood Native Americans. Later in the 1600s, when the English were settling North America, they didn't incorporate the Native Americans into their society. They wasn't gold. Uh, so it's not quite like the Spanish. And uh, there was less mixing of the races. So there was arguably less impact of diseases. Nevertheless, diseases spread when the Puritans settled in Massachusetts. And in one instance, an epidemic wiped out the neighboring Indians. The Puritans, famous as religious migrants, of course, attributed the Indian plague to the God clearing the land for them. John Winthrop of Massachusetts Bay remarked in 1634, quote, the natives are near dead of smallpox, so the Lord hath cleared our title to what we possess. The Indians around Massachusetts Bay would even try to dump uh, corpses with the smallpox into the wells of the settlers trying to, trying to uh, get them sick. It wasn't just smallpox. There were other diseases like typhus, which uh, wiped out some New England Indians right about the time of the Plymouth colony. There was, of course, influenza and measles. Uh, but smallpox was probably the greatest killer in time and, and uh, the one most scary. Uh, there's, it's, a, it's a terrible disease, smallpox. You, uh, it includes a high fever and you, know, you vomit blood and there's skin eruptions that turn into nasty abscesses and you know, ugly, oozing, smelling scabs. And if, and if one survives, there might be blindness or disfiguring pox. The, to the Indians, the 12-day incubation period made it even more scary because, and it was mysterious, that they, they really weren't, you know, they weren't quite clear, you know, uh, what caused it. And uh, there's an, actually later on a bit of a, a uh, old Indian folklore where an Indian meets smallpox riding a horse and smallpox announces that he brings death to 
uh, everyone, and then no one could stop him. Still other diseases the Europeans brought to Americas were things like tuberculosis, cholera, scarlet fever, diphtheria, and whooping cough. Cholera is particularly nasty. You get uh, you, you the bacterium gets in you. You you can have uh, real bad diarrhea. It can even kill you. Uh, measles and chickenpox uh, were seldom fatal in Europe, but they proved very deadly in North America. For a while, historians believe that the Native Americans gave syphilis to the Europeans. There were documented outbreaks of the disease in European port cities in the late 1400s and early 1500s. They even called it the, uh, the vengeance of the vanquished. Today, however, most scholars believe that syphilis was already in Europe at the time, and, uh, and so it didn't come back to uh, Europe with the colonists. The most famous animal to be brought from Europe to the Americas was, of course, the horse. A form of the horse had evolved in the Americas, but had become extinct, uh, perhaps as a result of the arrival of the Native Americans uh, millennia earlier. Over the years, breeding programs and new immigration brought more horses, and in time, there were many breeds and a large feral population. Horses, of course, needless to say, transformed life for many Americans, uh, Indians, especially on the Great Plains. Cattle were also an important import from Europe to North America, first brought by the Spanish. Breeding programs and immigration grew their numbers, and soon there were many different breeds, and, and there were feral cattle as well. The majority of the cattle, however, remained in the, in the West and Central America. Pigs were brought by the colonists to the Americas and intentionally bred, but they ultimately proved a problem. They, they reproduced so easily that once they became feral, you know, they, they had no natural predators, and there are lots of them, and they would uh, return to outlying farms on the frontier, and they would devastate crops. When the English brought the honeybees, of course, to make honey, the bees, of course, escaped too and became feral. Native Americans would call the bees English flies and lament that when you saw a fly, white people would surely follow. The Europeans, of course, were intentionally bringing things like horses and pigs, but there were other, uh, you know, rodents and rats and things that, that were stowing on these wooden ships the Europeans came on, and they brought many diseases inadvertently to America. That's why uh, many of the ships, you know, they had stored food and the rats would get involved in that, and so many ships had cats on board to protect the food supplies. The Europeans brought a, a variety of plant material, both intentionally and unintentionally. And uh, they brought the, the seeds to plant, but invariably seeds of weeds got included as well. Of course, weeds are known for being resilient and aggressive. But plants like uh, Kentucky bluegrass and white clover and others, they, they were brought over. They spread so fast that there was even debate later on about whether they were native to Americas or not. When European settlers later on pushed westward, they found things like Kentucky bluegrass already there. Weeds, in particular, disrupted the growth of a number of Native American plant species. Uh, most notably, these included the couch grass, the dandelion, nettles, and the sow thistle. The uh, weed plantain was so prevalent that the I Indians called it the Englishman's foot. And some of these weeds were actually not even from Europe, but but, but from Asia. They had made their way from Asia to Europe and then from Europe to uh, America. And one of these examples is kudzu. And, uh, you know, kudzu, of course, would you can see it in the American South. It can hang from plants and trees and can actually kill them. Native Americans had brought domesticated dogs with them when they came through Beringa Land Bridge millennia earlier. And these dog species had lived with the Native Americans for thousands of years. The Europeans, however, brought new species of dogs, which then bred with the native dogs. Today, pure Native American dogs are unusual, and most are either of pure European ancestry or mixed breeds. Here you can see a couple of uh, dogs, the hare Indian dog and the bear dog on the right, that uh, were uh, original Native American dogs that have become extinct. Back to some animals, goats and sheep were brought to America, obviously, for their 
the wool in regard to the sheep and the goats and for the milk. Other products that were imported to the Americas included, and you can go kind of top uh, left clockwise here, uh, but coffee, which was indigenous to uh, Africa. Then you've got things like olives, uh, onions. Actually, the Europeans brought a new breed, brand of onion. There were there were wild onions, a version of wild onions in America prior to European arrival, but the Europeans brought the onions we're more familiar with today. But, but peaches and pears, banana, cotton, and sugar were all not indigenous to America, but were, were brought here. In any event, this includes the first of the two short little videos on uh, the Columbian Exchange, this one on the products that came from uh, abroad to America.